Hello everyone. I am Dr. Aparna Kulkarni. In today's video, we will discuss the analytical chemistry third year experiment, estimation of potassium content of a fertilizer by flame photometry. I will divide the whole discussion in two parts. In first part, I will discuss the necessary theory like why we need to calculate amount of potassium. Then since we are using flame photometry, we need to know basics of flame photometric technique. Remember friends, we should perform practicals with objective. Then only practical sessions become meaningful. Sound theory helps in better understanding of practical. So don't skip this part. And in second part, uh, we will discuss uh, actual experiment, how to perform the experiment. As we all know, fertilizers are chemical substances supplied to the crops to increase their productivity, to increase fertility of soil. Over the years, crops remove the nutrient from soil. Uh, this decreases the fertility of soil. And so while cultivating new crops, we use fertilizers. Fertilizers provide necessary nutrients to the soil and thereby increase the crop yield. Use of fertilizer is thus essential for increasing crop yield and to satisfy food requirements of a growing population. Uh, fertilizers contain nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium as the primary nutrients. Each nutrient has its specific role in plant growth. Potassium is an essential nutrient for plant growth and it plays an important role in water regulation. Though soil contains potassium, relatively small amounts are available for plants. In case plants do not get adequate amount of potassium, plant develops uh, deficiency symptoms uh, you can see in figure. Uh, depending upon potassium status of soil, a uh, need for potassium fertilizer is decided. And here comes the role of analyst. As an analyst, determination of potassium content in soil or fertilizer is necessary to uh, fix the dose of fertilizer for a particular soil. Now, for determining potassium, we are going to use flame photometric method. So, we need to know what is flame photometry, how it works, and why this technique can be used for determination of potassium. Flame photometry is one of the branches of atomic spectroscopy. It is also known as flame emission spectroscopy. It has become a necessary tool in the field of analytical chemistry for determining metal ions like uh, sodium, potassium, lithium, calcium, cesium, and so on means basically alkali and alkaline earth metals. So on one side you can see the uh, flame photometer instrument and on one side uh, I have represented a schematic diagram of the process. Uh, basically uh, uh, the sample to be analyzed is uh, sucked and aspirated to the burner the sample is spread over the flame as fine droplets. The whole lot of things happen in the flame and the light emitted by a sample is sent to detector by usual optical system. Uh, thus, on a digital display, we get reading which we note down as emission intensity. What exactly happens when sample is burnt into the flame uh, means principle of flame photometry uh, it is shown picturally at the bottom i will explain it in stepwise manner uh, when sample is burnt in the flame the molecules in the sample get dissociated into gaseous atoms or ions these gaseous atoms uh, due to high energy of flame, high temperature of flame, get excited to higher energy level. However, 
these uh, atoms being unstable return back to ground state by emitting radiations. These radiations uh, generally lie in the visible region of the spectrum. Each of the alkali and alkaline earth metal has a specific wavelength. So by observing color of the flame, we get an idea about which element is present and the intensity of radiation since directly proportional to concentration of sample, uh, we can do quantitative study of sample. So this is the principle of fl flame photometry. Let's talk about this in more detail. Whichever sample we want to analyze, we take it in a beaker as a solution of a substance. Then the solution is sucked through small tubes and aspirated into the burner. The fine droplets are sprayed onto the flame. Due to high temperature of flame, the solvent is first evaporated, leaving fine divided solid particles. Molecules uh, in the sample dissociate into gaseous atoms and ions. Uh, these atoms absorb the energy from the flame and get excited to high energy levels. However, these excited atoms ions are not stable and they return back to ground state by emitting radiations. These uh, radiations uh, we can record. Uh, so by observing color of the flame, we come to know about which element is present. And uh, by recording the intensity of radiation, we, uh, we can calculate concentration of the sample. Uh, thus, uh, this technique is useful for both qualitative and quantitative analysis of alkali and alkaline earth metals. The table is showing a characteristic emission wavelength of few elements. Uh, so for example, if our sample contains uh, lithium, then uh, emitted wavelength will be 670 nanometer around and we will observe uh, a color of flame as red. So, in other words, if red colored flame is observed, we can say that our sample contains lithium. Now, how to carry out uh, quantitative analysis uh, using flame photometry? That uh, we will see with example of determination of potassium content in fertilizer uh, in next video.